episode of Tickle the Nerd, we tackle the first issue of the Ecto-1 Ghostbusters car from Ghostbusters the movie. It is freaking awesome. Right after this, we'll dive right into it. All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Tickle the Nerd. We are building the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters. That is the next thing that I am embarking on. It's the big project. It's one of the ones that I'm most excited about. This movie car, while I wasn't a huge fan of the movie when I was a kid, I certainly grew to be a better fan once my kids got into it. My kids are really into Ghostbusters. My daughter, uh, one of my daughters, uh, my younger daughter in particular, she's a movie nerd. She's a movie geek. In fact, she wants to make movies for a living. She's going to college for it. So this was a huge part of our household watching Ghostbusters, Star Wars, Back to the Future, all these other movies that were all great. But me, being a car guy, I really enjoyed watching Ghostbusters because I'm totally into the car from Ghostbusters. Um, I think it is, in my opinion, one of the greatest movie prop cars ever created. It is not the greatest, but it's one of the greatest. Uh, the greatest one, in my opinion, is another one that I'm going to be building in another episode of this. But for now, in this episode, it is about... The Ecto-1 Ghostbusters car. This is issue one. There are, I believe, if I'm reading the information correctly, there's 140 issues. This is a long build. This takes a long time to build. It's a subscription build. And everybody in Europe and Australia and these other countries and stuff, they have this dialed in pretty good. They understand what this subscription build thing is and they're pretty patient with this stuff. Of well, us dumb Americans over here, we don't get it. I have a hard time getting Americans to understand this subscription build thing because, well, let's face it, we are the instant gratification nation and we want this stuff right away, right now. And we need to be more patient with this stuff when we want to have cool stuff like what this is. I am really impressed with the engineering that goes into these model kits. And it really explains the cost of these kits if you understand the engineering involved. These things really have to be a subscription build because if, they, if they're not, they would just be way too expensive for people to buy and just build. The only way the common normal person could ever afford or would ever justify affording a model car kit as intense as accurate and as as well engineered as this is is to pay for it piece by piece so hopefully by me doing these videos and bringing more americans into this um they'll start releasing more kits into this country there are a few kits out there that are really cool that i would love to see in this country that aren't in this country they're not available in this country yet so and it's kind of ironic because they're all American TV shows and they're not American. <laughs> they're not available in America, these kits. It's kind of insane. There's a Knight Rider car, which is awesome. I was a huge Knight Rider fan when I was a kid. I was the exact age you need to be to think something like that is cool uh, when it came out. And as an adult, it still, still tickles the nerd. So um, what else was there? There's the Knight Rider car. There's the... Um, Dominic Toretto's Dodge Charger from um, Gone, um, Fast and Furious. That kit is available in other parts of the world. It was available in the States for a while, but for some reason in the last few months, it's been out of stock and you haven't been able to get it. So I haven't been able to order that one. Uh, what is the other one that I really like? Um, I can't remember it at the moment, but I'm going to get on with this video and at some point maybe I'll buy it or maybe... Uh, somebody um, could could show us the, you know their builds and, and and let us know in the comments how they how they're getting these kits because I think there's some people they're 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 networking together and getting these kits and they're shipping them back and forth to each other and stuff which has a cost factor to it but I think it's really cool that that people are doing that so I'm gonna probably look to you guys to help me with that at some point but right now I got a kind of three kits going on I got the Eleanor Mustang 
Got this Ghostbusters one, and then I have my third kit, which I'm not going to talk about yet until I get into starting that third video series. So, without further ado, let's jump into this thing and start building it. So, alright, I'm going to start cutting this thing open here. Um, it's quite a cool kit. It's got the, you know, first one's got the hood. So like it's got some grill pieces, a license plate, some screws. It comes with a screwdriver, but I don't like using the screwdriver it comes with. I got my own screwdrivers. I'm going to use those. So. Get this thing open. All right. My cat back on. out of here. These things are packaged really, really well. I'm pretty impressed with the packaging on these. I like that they're, um, they're blister packed and you can see them very clearly in all the parts. We'll see what happens if they're all that way, if it's just this one or what, but this one so far very impressive. So, don't forget to take this little sticker off the inside of the packaging. This is a sticker I believe you're going to use later in this build. So, I'm going to save this and not lose it. Um, actually, the tape is stuck there. Anyway, I'm going to leave that right over here. So, got our screws. Got some BM screws. Some AM screws that are painted white. I'm assuming they're white for a reason. We have it's like a piece of chrome piece here that's plastic. It's chrome pretty well. Um, hopefully I don't have to trim any of these little tabs up. There's these little bumpy little molding uh spruce uh where, where the spru the um you know the um the model was where the plastic was attached to the to the mold injection molding or whatever so we are going to probably trim those up i'm going to see how this fits if this fits without trimming it i'm going to i'll, I'll fit it without trimming but i I'm, I'm i'm all about fit in you know gaps and things like that so i want to make sure this is really really good uh, this piece here, another piece of the hood. This is actually metal. Metal as well. That's a good one there. I like the metal. Uh, very excited about these, uh, these little hood grills. These two hood grills are plastic, it feels like. Yep, plastic. It's alright though because you don't want the whole thing to be made out of metal because otherwise the thing will be 400 pounds. As it sits already, I read that this thing is probably over 40 pounds when it's complete. That is very impressive. We've got, got the little license plate here. Ecto-1 license plate. I think that's uh, fairly awesome. Very awesome, as a matter of fact. Ecto. Ecto-1? Ecto. There we go. Ecto-1. New York license plate. I wonder why it's offset like that. It's a little goofy. Um, and then finally, nice metal hood. Very heavy. Very, very heavy. Um, you kind of get the sense of the mass and the size that this thing is going to be. And let me show you an example here. This is my laptop. My laptop computer. And this is the hood. Fairly impressive uh, size-wise it's compared to my laptop, if that gives you an example of how large this kit's going to be. In fact, let me show you the poster. I'm going to show you the poster. The poster that comes with this kit has a life-size, which I can't even, can't even see me because it's so big. Can I get it on the camera? Yeah, I got the whole thing on there. Look how huge this thing's going to be. It says it's going to be... 
uh, 31 and a half inches long. That is just shy of three feet. Holy cow, this thing is going to be big. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to get this thing going. I can't wait to be two years down the road and see how freaking massive this thing is going to be. So, all right, we're going to get into this. Dive right in. All right. This guy over here, open the book up. What do we got going on here? So, I will, I've looked through this book already. I've checked out these parts. I have to say, between this and the Eleanor Mustang, there is a clear difference in the quality of the documentation and the, uh, the build quality in, in this kit. Um, it, it appears to me that they are actually manufactured by different model companies. Seems like this Ecto-1 and um, the other car that I'm going to be working on, it's, uh, these kits are, are very, very, are very different than the Eleanor Mustang. The Eleanor Mustang, it's just the, the, the quality of the material and the, the build pieces aren't as, as good as this kit, as far as I'm concerned. Um, this is an outstanding kit. So anyway, back to this. So... First step here wants me to take, what are they calling this thing? Locate the hood rim interior piece. Uh, I'm assuming that's one of these. Uh, okay, hood rim interior piece. And push it onto the rear of the hood rim exterior so that the four screw holes are aligned. All right, so I'm assuming this guy goes here like this. Gonna fit. Let me get this off to the side a little bit here so we can see what's going on here. So this guy looks like the chrome piece goes inside the back of this white metal piece so that it looks like that. Fits in there just like so. See? Like so. Little chrome piece on the bottom. So we're going to Take a look at that. So now it wants me to put some BM screws in here. So I'm going to look at these screws here, these little black ones. These are bag is marked BM. I will put these back in the bag after because I'm sure like all these other model kits, they give you a few extras. Now, one of the other things I talked about in my other videos is the oil. A lot of guys put oil on their screws, and I see it. I, I, I've heard about a lot of guys breaking screws when putting um, this, this kit together, particularly on this step of the Ecto-1, putting the vents on the hood. A lot of guys are breaking the screws inside the, uh, the hood. So what these guys do is they put some oil, and I talked about oil in a previous episode, and I didn't have any oil at the time, but I do now. I bought my oil. It is a... Basically, a 3-in-1 oil. Um, you can get this at pretty much... You probably get it at your grocery store. You get it at any hardware store. Walmarts. You know, all your auto parts stores. Everybody. I, 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 I'm hard-pressed to figure out a place where you probably can't buy this. You can probably buy this just about anywhere. So, this is good stuff. 3-in-1 oil. So, I'm going to put a little bit of this on my screws. Got my little tray here. Um, I have to cut this here. Cut up there, a little bit of oil in my bowl, and that should do it. Put my little cap back on here, get him out of the way. All right, so this is the goofy little screwdriver provided with this kit. Um, not super impressed with these, these screwdrivers. While it'll get you through, it will not last you the whole build. These aren't great. So. I have my own set of screwdrivers that I bought. These Weeha screwdrivers. I love these. Go online, buy them. Weeha. It says. Let's see if I can hide here. Ooh, get it. Weeha. Can you see? Weeha. Hey, cool stuff. So, BM screws, Weeha, screwdriver. 
Um, a little bit of oil on them. Not a lot. These screws are going into metal. And again, I'm going to sound like a broken record with these screws. Is take your time. Let the screws do the work. Do not force them. If you force them, you will break them. You break them, you'll be very sad and disappointed in yourself. Because it will be a pain in the ass to fix it or replace it. Uh, while I have to admit I'm impressed with Eagle Moss's build quality, I am not that impressed with Eagle Moss's ability to ship these things out in a timely manner. And if you had to get replacement parts, I imagine it's a, it's fairly a, a nightmare for, the, for this company. Um, now, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and I will blame it on COVID because in my line of work, I deal with a lot of uh, parts moving back and forth and the logistics in the United States right now and probably the rest of the world has been a bit of a nightmare. Um, not enough trucks, not enough stuff moving around as quickly as possible as they should. And that is probably a lot of the reason for the shortages that, that Eagle Moss is suffering from. I'm not going to blame it completely on that, but that's what I'm going to go with right now. Hopefully that's, that's the case. And when this is all said and done, um, it'll, it'll, everything will iron itself out. So I start all the screws first before I go and tighten them all down. This is to help ensure that all the screw holes are lined up before you, um, you tighten them down. Um, a rookie mistake is to tighten one screw down and then the rest of the holes don't really line up right and then you try and force them in and they can put you in a position to break a screw. That's another reason that you can break a screw. So, so I'm just going to go a little slower with these. Make sure they're nice and uh, nice and tight, and let the let the screw do the work. Don't force it. Don't don't you know? Don't go breaking a screw just because you're rushing and you're trying to go too quick. All right. So before I move on to the next step, I'm just going to check. It looks like this gap isn't going to be affected by these little um, little pieces here sticking out. Uh, although I am going to keep an eye on that. That little tab is still there. It's kind of goofy. I don't know if I really like it, but um, yeah, I don't. I don't like it at all. So I'll try to clean that up. Yeah, well, I'm just going to leave it for now because maybe it's not a big deal. Um, Adam Savage of Mythbusters fame is building this kit as well. Um, he's building this on his channel. His channel is uh, tested. Um, go check it out. You can look it up on YouTube. Just uh, just, just uh, do an assertion, tested or Adam Savage and you will find his channel. It's fairly impressive. He does a lot of cool builds and one of the builds he's doing is the Ecto one. And he's doing all the weathering and painting and all the, uh, the total nerd and geek stuff that he does so well. Um, I am not that skilled. Um, I am not that skilled nor am I that interested in having the model be that realistic. Um, to me, I, 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 I like that it looks kind of brand new and shiny and stuff. There are a couple things that I'll probably do to paint and, and to make it look a little more realistic, but ne not necessarily more rustic, uh, you know, used and, and beat up, which is the intent that he is having with his build. My build, I don't care if it's museum quality and nice and clean and look like a restored um, car because it, that looks fine to me. I, I, I'm okay with that. So that's that piece there. Next page. 
Um, these magazines are cool because they actually have a lot of information in them about the movie. So you see here we were just building, you know, the first part of the model kit here. And then, you know, deeper in, they have information about the movie and characters and the makings of it and all that stuff. So I messed up and I did the second part of the first part. Second part of issue one? Second part of the first issue first, instead of the first part of the first issue first, if that makes any sense. That's the second part. That's what I did first. And I missed the first part, which is this part. So I'm going to do the first part now, after the second part, which is kind of backwards, but it is what it is, and it happened, and that's what I'm going with. Part there, this part here. Little grills go on the hood here. These holes here. These grills here. These white AM screws. And this is where I read and where I've seen a lot of people have been breaking their screws. So let's not break any screws. Let's use our oil and let's take our time and see if we can get this to work right. There are some alignment holes. On the back, there's a couple of alignment pins on the back of the grills here. And you can see that the alignment pins line up with the holes there and allows you to get this thing in the right place. And they are different. These do not fit. This one is marked number one. This one is marked number two. And the alignment pins are in different places. So you cannot screw this up. This only fits one way. If I try to put this one on the wrong side, it does not let me do it. I have to put it on the correct side. So, those grills are there. Got these little white screws that are painted white. The heads of them are actually painted white, so they don't interfere. There is a guy making a modification to this, and there's a lot of mods out there. If you start going down the rabbit hole of people building these kits, there's a lot of people building modifications to these kits. And one of them, I believe his name is Mike Lane. Go ahead and look him up. Uh, Mike Lane's Mods, or Mike Lane Mods, I don't know, I'll put the link down in the uh, description down here. He makes a mod for this thing that looks even more realistic, that doesn't have these screw holes, doesn't have these screws holding it in. I'm pretty sure that the real movie car does not have these gigantic screws when you scale them up holding these little grills on. So, I'm not that uptight about it. There's a lot of other mods that I'd rather get instead of that mod, but... It is pretty cool that there is people out there doing mods. All right, guys, sorry about that. The camera stopped and I'm back in business. Uh, so I was talking about Mike Lane. Mike Lane uh, made a mod for this hood grill and you can go ahead and check it out on his page. I will put the link in the description and it's uh, it's fairly impressive. A lot of the the, um, the 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 modifications that he has done. He does a lot of sticker mods and things like that, make it more accurate. It's really cool. So again, starting all the screws first before I bring them all the way home to make sure all the holes are lined up and limit. The possibility of me breaking these screw heads. I am most anxious about this stage because again this is where I see a lot of people breaking these screws. So that's a 3-in-1 oil on them. screw a lot of screws in this kit and, and what's what's really neat about these kits is they are really uh, held together all screws there's there's really no gluing involved in any of these kits and that is uh, pretty awesome it allows you to revisit different things you can take it apart so if you have a mod that you're interested in and you 
don't want to buy it right now, you can go ahead and build this model and then go back and put the mod in later by taking the kit apart and doing it again. Um, very cool. So, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these screws down. I'm going to be very gentle with them because I don't want to break them. And they don't have to be really tight. You know, once the once the screw is all the way down and it looks good, just stop. You know, don't go over tightening it. It's not you don't have to it's just holding a little plastic grill on. It's not like it's you know holding a wheel on the car or, you know, a lug nut or something like that. I mean, it's just a little screw holding a tiny piece of plastic on. I mean, just snug it up and move on to the next one. Okay, three down, five to go. So far, so good. I'm also being careful not to chip the paint off of this as I'm tightening this up. If you, if you slip, not hold your screwdriver nice and straight, you can you can strip the paint off of this and it'll look kind of goofy. And I really don't want it to look goofy. All right, so those are in good. Let me get these four in now. Looks good. So, little grills are in. Looks good. All four of the screws. Very impressed with the, wow, just the mass of this thing is just really cool. So that's it. That's all there is in this um, set. This, this first, let me put my screws back here. I'm going to leave these screws. I'm going to get a little tray that has the, um, that I can put all these screws in at some point as the build goes along. Right now I don't have the tray, so I'm just going to save these bags. And they're labeled AM, BM. I'm just going to keep them inside the bags for now. So, so that's what we got. We have the hood, the little chrome piece, and then we have the license plate, which is really cool, and then the Ghostbuster sticker. So, that's all there is in this build. So, this just barely, barely whets the appetite. So, um, yeah, it's fun though. It's going to be cool when it's done. All right, so tune in next time, guys. And please remember, uh, subscribe to my channel so you get all the updates when I'm doing these videos. You'll see it first when I, when I, when I publish them. And the subscription really helps me um, figure out that you guys really like what's going on here. So please leave comments below, ask questions, um, offer me advice. If you want, if there's something you want to know that I can help you with, then I'll certainly try to do so. If not, I will try to find a way to help you guys with this stuff. Um, very excited about these builds. And this is the end of issue one of the Ghostbusters Ecto-1 build. And... We will see you next time with issue number two on this build. I don't know if I'm going to be doing this in my next video, if I'm going to be doing something else in my next video, but I have more of these kits coming. I'm told in a couple weeks I will have four more of each one of the kits that I'm doing. So I'm going to try to do one or two of these videos a week, depending on my work schedule, because this isn't my only gig. I'd love it to be my only gig, but I don't know. I'm just not there yet. don't have enough subscribers. Can't can't do that so for now i'm just going to keep doing what i'm doing hoping you guys like what you see here subscribe that's it talk to you next time guys thanks for watching